So here are some of the basic things that uh, I'm going to use to actually build this Wi-Fi jammer. I've got uh, one of these cases here, it actually clips on and off so you don't need to undo any screws. And the reason uh, that I've chosen this case is because I'm going to power it all from one of these 18650 batteries. So I've got a battery holder and that it'll be in there but when you need to actually charge the battery you're able to actually take it out and uh, put it into a separate charger. And I'm also going to be using the uh, same AV transmitters that I've used previously. I'm going to be using four of these. A uh, simple on-off rocker switch. And uh, I've got four pigtails here so we can actually uh, mount these uh, bulkhead SMA connectors to the uh, top of the uh, project box here. And then we can put different antennas on there, whatever we want to do. But it just makes it a little bit more flexible to use. And I'm also going to be mounting an LED somewhere on the case just so you actually know when the device is switched on. So first of all then I'm going to drill the holes for the SMA connectors. Now what I've decided to do is have all four SMA connectors on the top here. Now I did think about possibly having one at uh, each side here and two on the top. So uh, you'd have uh, something like that. But I thought if you wanted to quickly uh, put it in your bag or out of the way then uh, having them on the side it could actually lead to actually uh, breaking or snapping so I think it's best if I have all four on the top. Now because I'm doing this by hand what I've done is just put a little bit of masking tape over the uh, edge here and I've just marked out with the ruler spacing out uh, the four holes for the SMA connector so you get them as straight as possible so it looks a lot neater. So I've mounted the antennas on just to get a feel to see how uh, actually big this is going to end up being and uh, I've mounted the battery in as well and I've just had to bend this coax slightly round here. It's not too tight so it's not causing any major problems there. And uh, I've got the rocker switch here so I think I'm going to actually mount that on this side because uh, I'm right handed. Most people are right handed so it'll be good to actually switch it on and off there like you would uh, say a walkie talkie for instance. So I'm getting ready to cut the hole to put the uh, rocker switch in there but uh, I'm also going to put the LED just above the rocker switch on the side here. I'm not going to put it uh, in the top of the lid because I want this lid to actually come off so you can get in to swap the battery out and charge it up when it's uh, depleted. So just above the rocker switch it should look okay. And I've also put a little uh, resistor there on the positive leg just uh, that these uh, very small LEDs only work on around 1.5 volts so it just gets that voltage down so it doesn't pop the LED. So, so far then everything's fitting in there quite nicely. I've got the battery in there with the uh, battery holder switch on the side and I've got this small LED on the side there to show when it's actually powered on. So I've got all this space here now that I can use to take up with the actual AV transmitters so there's plenty of room in there. So uh, let's move on to the AV transmitters themselves. So this is one of the transmitters that uh, I bought a batch of probably getting on for two years ago now. Uh, really really simple I'll uh, put a schematic and wiring diagram down in the description below but uh, you've just got your two power wires coming in here and uh, these two solder points here you can actually add audio and video to this so you can transmit audio and video but uh, you've got four uh, holes here which are uh, used as uh, jumper points so you can put jumper wires in there to uh, give you uh, the uh, different channels one two four for instance but uh, one channel on this AV transmitter actually blocks three channels on the Wi-Fi so you can actually block all 12 channels on a uh, standard Wi-Fi router by uh, using four of these in uh, conjunction with each other just using different jumper wires to uh, select the different channels there. So as I said really really simple this is uh, a little monopole that's uh, a piece of wire that's soldered on here to this solder point here and that's the antenna so one of the uh, things you can do with this is add a uh, proper antenna on and use this pad here as a ground plane and uh, just doing that actually extends the range of this uh, little EV transmitter. Now this one here is one that I've just recently purchased off the same seller that sold me these and uh, he was uh, actually using the picture for these on his uh, eBay uh, listing but uh, these arrived in the post. Now 
I wasn't too worried it looks like they've upgraded the crystal there to uh, something a little bit more substantial rather than this through hole one here which is a bit uh, you know if you don't glue it down you can uh, move it you can snap it off quite easily so I'm not too worried about that but um, I want to flip it over and I want to show you something on the uh, underside here and bear in mind that the uh, little schematic he's got on his uh, website there is the uh, schematic that I've actually got already which is uh, to do with this one here but here on this new one we have actually got an extra jumper hole down uh, the side here that we haven't got on uh, that one you've only got the four little uh, vias there which you can use to jump but this has actually got five now what I can tell you is that the fifth one on this is just a uh, ground plane so you can either jump it from the first one here to these in succession or you can jump it from this side so although it looks a little bit confusing it's not you can uh, totally ignore the uh, fifth one if you like now you probably also notice that the little antenna on here is also soldered in the wrong place the antenna should be soldered through a hole which is just here like on this original one and this is the hole that it should actually be soldered to now I've actually got eight of these and I can tell you that they're all the same so whoever's uh, put these together at the factory and soldered the little monopole on there they've actually soldered it in the wrong place they've actually soldered it direct to the uh, ground plane so effectively this little AV transmitter doesn't have an antenna so uh, I've got to desolder that and uh, we're going to solder our new antenna up onto that uh, solder pad there because I know that that is where the antenna should be. So here's a close up shot then of the three that I've put uh, the jumper leads on to change the channels. So I've got the first one here and there's the second one and here's the uh, third one. And obviously the uh, fourth one has no jumper leads on at all. Now you don't actually get the uh, little jumpers with these AV transmitters so you just get yourself some thin solid core wire and just uh, cut it to length and make your own. Now I'm going to be wiring these up upside down. I'm going to have the centre connector of the coax coming up through this little hole here where it should be actually soldered to and then the outer braid I'm going to tin that down onto this ground plane here. This uh, little rectangle ground plane is not connected to uh, where the actual signal wire of the coax should be connected they're not uh, connected in any way this goes straight to a ground plane so it's perfectly all right for us to uh, solder down our outer braid directly onto that pad there and solder the signal wire straight through that hole there and a little tip if you're actually building into a project box like this um, as opposed to actually building your project um, at the side and then transplanting it all into the project box in one go then uh, to make it a little bit easier for you especially when I'm coming here I'm stripping these wires and I've got to solder it onto something so small is get yourself a piece of wood or a piece of perspex like this and you can put it on top of the project box and then I can lay the wire down and do all the stripping and soldering directly on this flat surface and then I can just move that away and then move on to the uh, next one it makes it a lot easier if you do something like this so I've got the coax prepared and in position ready to solder onto this little AV transmitter and uh, I've cut the coax back to the appropriate size and I've also uh, trimmed back the outer braid here I only want a small amount of it to actually braid it back together again and create a thin wire like you can see here and I've pre-tinned that up I've also pre-tinned the centre connector and I've got that coming up and through underneath and then through this hole here where the actual antenna should be the signal wire anyway of the antenna should be soldered onto and then that outer braid to this uh, little solder pad here going back to ground so that's the first transmitter soldered in place there and uh, what I'm going to do is put some heat shrink tubing over the top of this like I said just prior to me actually connecting the power lines in and I've also put a little bit of heat shrink tubing on the coax just prior to me soldering it in just to tidy it up a little bit round here and uh, I've put a little slit in it at the top here, just small, so I can actually fit the uh, outer braid, this wire here, into the uh, heat shrink itself, so it looks a lot neater when it's actually in position. 
So the little AV transmitters are all sold onto the coax lines now and they've got their heat shrink tubing over the top of them and I'm just going to leave them in the box like that. I'm not going to actually glue them down to the base of the uh, project box itself. There's really no need. So now what I'm going to do is tie all the uh, ground wires together including the ground wire for the LED and solder it directly onto the uh, wire that's connected to the uh, battery connection here down here and all the uh, positive wires are all going to go and be soldered on to uh, the opposite side of the uh, switch. So the jammer has actually uh, finished now and it's worked out quite well. It's quite tidy inside the case and everything fits in that small case which is the uh, main thing and uh, we can remove this battery and uh, charge it up separately from the unit itself and because we're not using a case with uh, screws it's got these uh, plastic clips on here so it's easy to actually uh, pop off and uh, pop back on again to take the uh, battery out to actually charge it. And another thing as well if you wanted to make these dipoles a little bit shorter you can actually uh, pop them off here and you've got uh, a little bit of empty space in the tube at the top so you could shorten it a little bit so it's not uh, protruding too much from the uh, jammer itself. And of course you could also make your own dipole antennas and wire them directly in to the little AV units as well. That would make them even shorter. And uh, you could also save some money with the cost with the uh, bulkhead SMA connectors but uh, you're only talking about a few pence. So to end this video then what I've got here I've got the uh, spectrum analyzer running on the uh, laptop again. As you can see there the amount of red. Um, that's coming from this jammer blocking uh, the complete spectrum for the uh, Wi-Fi channels, channels 1 to 12. And you can see at the bottom there the uh, signals bouncing up and down. And uh, just at the side of my laptop I've got my tablet there and it's running a little program called uh, Wi-Fi Signal Analyzer. And at the minute the needle is at zero. It normally has a uh, pinging sound when it picks up a uh, signal from my uh, router, the, the router that it's connected to but because the jammer is running at the moment it's not picking up any signal so what I'll do I'll just turn the jammer off and then you should see it connect again so there you go the uh, amount of red and noise on the uh, spectrum analyzer has now uh, gone away and the tablet is now connected again to uh, my router in the house so before I finish the video I just want to add a word of warning and uh, I live in the UK now it's perfectly legal in the UK for me to actually build one of these little jammers it's perfectly legal for me to actually own one of these jammers but uh, it's illegal to actually use this in a public place now in the UK we're actually governed by Ofcom now Ofcom don't have any teeth really they're, they're absolutely useless at uh, what they do and David Cameron did say if he got in for another term he would abolish Ofcom so Ofcom is nothing like uh, you have in the US with the uh, FCC now they do have teeth and they do take action over things like this so just be warned check uh, the laws in your own country before actually uh, building one of these because it may be likely that just owning one in your country will be uh, illegal. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, you got something out of it and uh, if you did please uh, give it a thumbs up. Drop a comment below if you've got any questions and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.